Hey folks, welcome to week 12 of DMD 105, Digital Design Foundations. How's everybody doing? All right, so let's take a look at the week 12 module and see what we're up to. All right, so this week we are introducing our fourth and final project, Project 4. Uh, this project is done in Adobe Illustrator, so it is still an Illustrator project. Uh, it is uh, a little more of an open-ended sort of creative project, so let's take a look at what it is. You can download Project 4 right here just by clicking on this link. It'll take you right to the project in Canvas, but we're going to take a look at it right here. All right, so this is the handout. So what you are doing is you are creating a vector celebrity portrait. So of course, as you know, Adobe Illustrator is a vector graphics program that allows you to create imagery and graphics using essentially mathematics. And so we are going to use that to create a portrait of a celebrity of your choice. Now we do have a theme, monochromatic colors, and we'll talk about what that is in a second. And we are using Illustrator uh, because even though Adobe Photoshop might be sort of a choice for a more uh, painterly type approach to this, we are going to try to come at this from more of a drawing point of view, using shapes and uh, lines and colors. And so we should be able to do that nicely in Adobe Illustrator. So let's talk about our theme. So monochromatic colors. If you're not familiar with monochromatic colors, uh, they are basically all the colors, the tints, the tones, and the shades of a single hue. Now, a hue, of course, is just a pure color. So if you look at the color wheel, uh, all of the colors that appear on the color wheel, from red all the way back around to red again, each one of those individually is a hue. And so if you choose a color on the color wheel and then go ahead and add uh, some darkness to it in one direction and some lightness to it in another direction, you will have all of the tints, tones, and shades of that particular color. So if you look at the example over here, you'll see that the strip of color in the center is the pure version of the red, but then as you add a little bit of white to it, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until finally you get sort of a pink version of it. Then if you go back to the middle again and then start adding a little bit of black to it just in sort of little bits at a time, it gets darker and darker and darker and darker until you have a few versions of it that get darker down to almost a maroon color. And of course you could keep going all the way to black and in the other direction you could keep going all the way to pure white. So that collection of colors that starts out with the pure color in the middle, that pure hue, that is a monochromatic color palette. And so that's what you're going to work with. So you're going to pick one color of your choice, whatever color you want, uh, and you're going to use that as your color palette for creating this celebrity portrait. Okay. So monochromatic color schemes provide opportunities in art and visual communications uh, as they allow for greater range of contrasting uh, tones that can be used to attract attention, create focus, and support legibility. Now, of course, they're not realistic, right? We don't have actual people walking around that are all just all red or all blue, right? We all are a variety of different colors. And so it's meant to be sort of a design choice, an artistic choice to help get across some of the story that you're trying to tell, right? So the use of monochromatic color provides a strong sense of visual cohesion, and it can help support communication objectives through the use of connotative color, meaning the color has a personality, right? Now, we're not getting too deep into sort of the psychology of color here, but just through your own experience, you can sort of understand that certain colors feel and act certain ways, right? Red is very sort of passionate. Blue is maybe a little more calm, and you can interpret it however you would like. Okay, so the directions. First things first, you've got to find a high-resolution photo of a celebrity of your choice, right? So, exam for example, in Google, uh, make sure that you are searching for images that are larger than two megapixels, and you can go to advanced search in the Google image search and do that, right? And uh, we can go over that more a little later if you'd like, but basically you want a good high-resolution photo. Now, what defines a celebrity? That's entirely up to you. Uh, it could literally be a well-known actor, it could be a musician, it could be somebody famous in some other way, or it could just be your favorite person who owns a sandwich shop up the street from your house. If you consider them a celebrity, that's fine with me. Uh, you get to define it any way that you would like. Uh, so you're going to then open up a new document in Illustrator and you're going to place your celebrity image onto the first layer just like we did with those coloring pages for working with our pen tool. So you're going to place the image, rename the layer as photograph, and of course you can turn it into a uh, 
uh, transparency if you would like by dimming it and locking it. This way it can work as a template. Uh, and then, of course, from there, you're going to start making your illustration. Now, there's more instructions here on how, how to go about doing that. A little later in the week, we're going to go through a demonstration on how that works. But you can certainly start working on it on your own. But for now, get your photo, pick out your celebrity, set up your Illustrator file, and then you can get rolling on it. Now, let's look at some examples of finished products of this. So we'll start with the one that's on the handout, this one here. Uh, notice how if you take a close look at it, and we kind of zoom in on it a little bit here, uh, you can see that really it's made up of a whole bunch of individually drawn shapes. Now these could be drawn with the pen tool, they could be drawn loosely with the pencil tool, either way. Now this one is not fully monochromatic, um, but you get the idea. It's partially purple and partially uh, shades of blue, so it's mostly monochromatic, or it's monochromatic in certain areas. Um, but really these examples I'm showing you are more for the way in which they're structured using Illustrator and less about really their color palette. Um, so each individual section of this is broken down into tiny little pieces. So the hair is broken down into little pieces, the eyebrows, the skin tone, so on and so forth. Let's look at another one. So this one here, this one truly is monochromatic. This one is all one color palette. And of course, white and black works because as I said, in setting up your color palette, you can go all the way to white and then all the way back down to black and then all the colors in between. This one's a little more simple. It doesn't have quite as much detail. And you can probably tell by the angularness of the lines that this was drawn mostly with the pen tool and maybe not so much the pencil tool. Uh, you obviously can use a combination of drawing tools however you would like. Okay, here's one of somebody a little more famous. You know who this is. Uh, now this one, of course, is done in very straight lines, very angular. Um, and you can see that this is definitely done with the pen tool uh, as all of the shapes are angular. I show this one because I want you guys to take some artistic license with this and don't feel as though you have to make it super realistic. You can make this as uh, sort of designed as you would like. It could be cartoony, it could have a particular style to it, it's totally up to you. This of course is really using a lot of geometric shapes and straight lines. Now again, this one is not fully monochromatic, but again, I'm looking at this more for the style than anything else. Okay, here's another example of one, uh, done more loosely with the pencil tool, a little more painterly and sort of the different shapes and overlaying each other. Here's one with a lot of detail, just to go in the opposite direction. If we zoom in on this one, you can see all the work that was put just into the eyes alone. Now, I'm not expecting you to put this much detail into it, but the more detail, the better. So certainly want to take your time with it. And this person went ahead and made a really nice, interesting background on top of that. Okay, now this next set, we're all done by the same person. Um, so they all have a very similar style. And I just wanted to show you uh, the different ways in which you can sort of construct these. What I like about these, unlike the ones we've seen, is this one, these don't actually have backgrounds. They're sort of free-floating, and they're meant to be uh, sort of more avatar-like, and that's certainly an option as well. So you can see this one, this one here, this one here. I love this one in that it doesn't even show the person's entire face. It really just gets them from the nose down. Um, and sort of showing off their signature earring, uh, which is kind of a funny earring. So you could certainly make an option to do this too. You don't have to just do a, a straight on head shot. You could get creative with the composition of the piece as well. Even if the photograph you get is just sort of a straight on head shot, you are certainly welcome to uh, crop it any way you would like and just illustrate from a portion of it if you would like. All right, here's another one. Now this one is fully monochromatic, right? This is all just shades of gray. Uh, notice how some of the white parts of it just sort of bleed into the white background, like the neck here and the highlight on the forehead. So that's a really nice way to do it as well. Really like this one a lot. There's another one. You know, a couple of these uh, people were in glasses, so they went ahead and included the reflections, which is really neat. And this last one is not a vector celebrity portrait, but it is a celebrity portrait. This, as you may know, is by Andy Warhol, who was a famous pop artist. Why do I include Andy Warhol's work? Well, because our, our goal here is to sort of remove a photograph of a celebrity, in this case, this was Marilyn Monroe, uh, from reality and create them in an artistic interpretation. We are doing it in a vector format. Of course, Andy Warhol worked in screen printing. 
Um, but either way, it's the same sort of concept. And here he had sort of repeat images of Marilyn showing her in a variety of different ways, uh, sort of multiple steps removed from reality. And so we're going to try to do that with ours. Now, these examples are available to you in files. If you go over here to files in Canvas and go to projects and quizzes uh, and then open up project four, you can see that there's a folder full of examples and that has all the ones that we just looked at. So if you want to open them up and take a closer look at them and really dissect them, you are certainly free to do that. Okay, so once again, for now, go ahead and decide which celebrity you want to focus on, get a good photo of them, maybe a couple of good photos of them, uh, place them into Illustrator, set up your file and start planning out how you are going to start drawing them and of course, settle on your monochromatic palette. All right, so go do that, and we will look deeper into this a little later in the week. I will talk to you soon.